If you use the same password for every website you visit, then I have got some bad news for you. Reusing passwords is the quickest way to get hacked and lose access to all your services. If your password is like password123 or your date of birth, then this is a catastrophe waiting to happen. You should always, always use a password manager and should not repeat any of your passwords. Each password should be unique. Your online presence is not always safe. And no matter how careful you are, one of your services is going to get breached. And if you use the same password everywhere, the rest of your services are also at risk because someone who gets access to those passwords can log in to your other services using the same credentials, which is extremely dangerous. We will compare different password managers with a certain criteria in mind. And we will take a look at these five things. First, we will look at how easy it is to self-host these password managers. The next thing we are going to take a look at is how many platforms do they support. We will also take a look at the security and privacy of these password managers. We will look at how easy it is to use them from the user's point of view and how easy it is to migrate to and from these services. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first password manager on our list is Passbolt. Passbolt is designed with teams in mind. You can easily self-host with the Docker Compose template which is provided officially. Their community version provides most of the features you will need for your personal use and even some more. And all the source code including the API and the command line tools are publicly available on GitHub. When it comes to platform support, Passport supports a variety of platforms for their server setup. If you want, you can use the Docker container to run their server. There is also a dedicated Docker Compose file provided by them, so you can set up a Passport server very quickly. And if you want to run it natively, there are quite a few options as well. Just run the script provided by them for a particular distribution and you are ready to go. It even supports ARM architectures like Raspberry Pi and there is a dedicated guide for running it on Raspberry Pi. In terms of security, Passbolt takes things very seriously. First and foremost, it's end-to-end -end encrypted. They even have a white paper on their website which explains how their code base is working internally. Each secret stored in Passbolt is digitally signed and its integrity can be verified. If you are not sure, you can use your own PGP key to encrypt your data. And if you use open PGP based encryption, you can decrypt your data with any external tool that you want. This means that you are not reliant on Passport completely, which is a huge, huge plus points for any sensitive data. The client side encryption key only stays on the client and it's never stored on the server, not even in encrypted form and Passport provides very granular access to each user and the permissions are set for individual users. Their complete source code is open and it has been audited regularly to ensure that the code base is not vulnerable and it has passed all the audits successfully. Before we proceed further, consider subscribing to this channel to get more news about exciting new projects from the world of self-hosting. When it comes to device support, Passport is able to run on all modern browsers to their extension. There is also a dedicated app for Android and for iOS. However, they don't have a dedicated desktop app, which can be a huge deal for some people. Another great thing about Passport is their automation mechanism. With their command line interface and with their APIs, you can automate a lot of things if you want to use Passport on your server. In addition to Passphrase, you can use external tools like YubiKey and Authenticator apps for adding supports for multi-factor authentication. When it comes to self-hosting, there is a dedicated Docker image as well as a template Docker Compose file, so it's quite easy to spin up a server. So for that, I will give it a solid 5. And for platform sports, it lacks a desktop client for Windows, for macOS and for Linux. So I will give a 3 in this case. For security, they follow all the industrial standards. So I will give them a 4 for this. And since it can import and export to various standard formats like CSVs and Keepos databases, I will give a solid 4 in this case. 
The second option on our list is Sono Password Manager. It is another open source password manager that has an option of self-hosting. There is a dedicated community edition from Sono which can be self-hosted. Sono boasts a multi-layer encryption. The first one is the client-side encryption, which ensures that no one at Sono has access to your credentials in clear text, which is a must for such a sensitive application like password managers. In addition, Sono also offers storage encryption and SSL for further encryption and security. It also offers encrypted password sharing between teams and multi-factor authentication support is also present with physical keys like YubiKey or authenticator apps. One of the most important features in Sono is encrypted file sharing option, which allows you to transfer encrypted files directly from the password manager. This feature can be used with link sharing without ever needing a Sono account. You just share a link with someone and they can download the encrypted file and use some kind of authentication to decrypt it. The self-hosted version of Sono has a password breach detection mechanism which checks if your password is present in some known breach and notifies you in email if your password has been detected. This way you can easily mitigate this issue. Setting up a Sono server is quick and easy. You can install it with the script provided on their website, although there is a disclaimer that it should not be used in production. In addition to the service itself, you also need to set up a Postgres database for it to work properly. For self-hosting, I will give Sono a rating of 3 since there is no official Docker or Docker Compose file. When it comes to privacy, Sono is both HIPAA as well as GDPR compliant. So you can be sure that your data is protected by the respective laws. By the looks of it, it seems like Sono takes great care of its encryption. They use S-Script algorithm for encryption instead of much more famous PBKDF2. This makes Sono's encryption much more resource intensive, but it also means that it provides a stronger encryption. Sono uses three separate encryption levels. The first one is in the browser and it is done through the S-Script library. During transport, it implements its own transport layer encryption between the client and the server. This is on top of already encrypted protocols like HTTP and TLS. The third and the last one is encryption at rest on the server side. Here Salsa20 encryption algorithm is used and their code is regularly audited before it's added to the production. Sono clients are available for a variety of platforms including browser extensions. They have a web client as well as an app for both Android and iOS. However, there is one thing to note that there is no desktop client for Windows or for Linux. So for that I will give Sono a rating of 3. The interface itself is quite simple. You have a bunch of navigation tabs on the left. You can create folders and organize your secrets within folders. There is nothing fancy going on there. Their UI is decent but nothing out of the ordinary. So I will give a 3 for user experience and user interface. When it comes to migration, it supports plenty of options including CSVs and key pros databases. So I will give a 4 for migration capabilities. The third and last option we are going to take a look at is Bitwarden. Bitwarden is one of the most transparent options out there. Bitwarden has a paid service that you can use but it also provides a free service which includes most of the features that you want in a password manager. Bitwarden also has a self-hosted option that you can host yourself. Here we will only discuss the self-hosted version. Bitwarden provides a docker image to spin up their server. Since Bitwarden is completely open source, there are community versions for it as well. One of the most famous implementation of Bitwarden is called Bitwarden RS, which is written in Rust and it provides much more memory safety guarantees than other languages for example. One thing to note here is that the Bitwarden RS is now called Vault Warden, though at the operational levels there is no difference between the official Bitwarden or Vault Warden. One of the main features which distinguishes Bitwarden from other password managers discussed before is the availability of multiple client applications for all platforms. 
It has a dedicated desktop app for Windows, for Mac OS and for Linux. In addition, there are also Bitwarden extensions for almost all modern browsers and you can also get the application for Android and for iOS. And for this feature, I'm going to give Bitwarden 5 points. Bitwarden is extremely secure and on top of it, it is fully open source. It encrypts all the data before it leaves the client side and the data stored on the Bitwarden server is just an in encrypted blob and even the Bitwarden employees cannot get access to it or harvest credentials from that. Bitwarden's user interface is the one thing that seems a bit outdated However, the goal of Bitwarden is to be stable and secure. Its user interface is perfectly usable and extremely stable. Bitwarden follows a very slow change approach to its UI to ensure that the UI doesn't compromise the security of their system. On the user experience side, I will give a solid 4 to Bitwarden. Bitwarden can import and export from most of the modern password management solutions. However, when it comes to export, Bitwarden has no way of exporting all the fields. It currently does not export file attachments as well as some password history, which can be a significant pain point for some people trying to switch to some other services or for just creating a backup for example. So at the end, whatever password manager you choose, it's still better than a no password manager. And with that, we come to an end of our video. I hope you like this one and stay with us for the next one.